Hi, sir. Which is Gary Sinise? I'm Gary Sinise. Well, I'm still to take a picture of you. Well, <laughs> we will absolutely get a picture. You bet. We're at Los Angeles Airport for the Gary Sinise Foundation Soaring Valor event down to the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. We've got a great group of very, very excited veterans and staff members here for the Gary Sinise Foundation. Let's go, let's get there. Hey, everybody. Look at Dan. <laughs> Come on out, let's have some fun. Hello, sir, Gary Sinise. Hello, sir, how are you? Good job. Thank you. How are you, brother? I'm Gary Sinise. I'm Jim Mather. Thank you for being here. Good to see you again. When did we see each other? A year ago. Well, that's me. <laughs> I'm David Heath. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Frank Rommel. Pleased to meet you. We're going to have a good time getting to know each other. Hey, it's Ramon. Muchas gracias. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you. Robert Frank and Irving. Hi. Yeah, I do. We are thrilled to have you. Lieutenant Dan, I'm also. In 26 years with American Airlines, I can't think of a day that resounds more strongly than today as we celebrate the freedom that we have as a country because of the sacrifices of the men in this room today. Yeah. Well, let's uh, get Soaring Valor off the ground. Let the voting process begin. I'm excited to stand. God bless you. I'm sure glad to thank you. This is part of our educational outreach to the Gary Sinise Foundation to preserve these oral histories for future generations. So we have the privilege today of taking about 45 World War II veterans. None of them have ever seen the National World War II Museum. And we're honored to be able to share this trip with them. Don't fly into any geese. With great partners like American Airlines who offer us the transportation to take these heroes to New Orleans, we are able to do great things. This is the way to fly, huh? Enjoy your trip. Thank you. A selfie. Listen, this is one of the nicest trips I've been on in my 94 years. We can never do enough for our veterans. I'm serving some heroes here. Hello, sir. Can I interest you in some bread? Let's see, we've got... That's like one of those? Oh, well, it looks good. That's a tasty little piece there. One of these, yeah, beautiful. That's good with the pasta there. One of these. There you go, sir. Just a whole week. Okay. Clean your plate. This would be a new experience for me. I'm overwhelmed to just to be here with these old timers. You know, they're they got a lot of stories, and I like the way they tell them. <laughs> so we embellish. <laughs> You know, you, uh, the flak was so thick that you could lower your landing gear and taxi on it. to watch the looks on the faces of the men and women serving today and the baseball teams that were here with us and, the, and, the, and just the general travelers in this airport to welcome them to this region. It's just been phenomenal. you and I think of the words of Stephen Spender's poem. You are men who in your lives fought for life and left the vivid air signed with your honor. Welcome to the World War II Museum. There is a profound moral difference between the use of force for liberation and the use of force for conquest. 
you were here to liberate, not to conquer. And so you and those others did not doubt your cause. And you were right not to doubt. You all knew that some things are worth dying for. One's country is worth dying for and democracy is worth dying for because it's the most deeply honorable form of government ever devised by man. All of you loved liberty. All of you were willing to fight tyranny and you knew the people of your countries were behind you. Magnificent words from Ronald Reagan on the 40th anniversary of Dugan. We're all looking forward to the major portion of the tour, which starts with Beyond All Boundaries, the documentary that I had the privilege of doing the voice of Ernie Pyle in. So Gary's been involved with this. Everybody knows him as the voice of Ernie Pyle. Gary, would you just like to say a quick word about what this meant to you to be involved with Beyond All Boundaries? It was great. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> when Tom Hanks was working with me and Phil Hedema, to develop our epic 4D experience beyond all boundaries. Tom Hanks said, get Gary Sinise for Ernie Pyle, and it was perfect. And all around below were the shadows, the dark shadows of buildings and bridges that formed the base of this dreadful masterpiece. One word, wow. I just loved every minute of it. It's one of the most magnificent things I've ever seen and heard and felt. I thought it was fantastic. I thought pretty authentic. And you know, the flight where there were Hackack all over the place. Gordon Francis. Very real. Everybody should see it. Everybody. Today's tours are going to be extraordinary. After they come out of Beyond All Boundaries, they'll go into the brand new exhibits that opened last December, The Road to Berlin, which carries a narrative story from the deserts of North Africa where we began to attack the Third Reich and we'll go through North Africa, Sicily and Italy and then sweep up into France and the D-Day invasions and the race across France, the Battle of the Bulge and penetrating deep into Germany. We'll tell that story from land, sea and air and how America's military might gradually came to bear to destroy the Third Reich. I flew a radio man in B-25s for 70 missions in Europe. So I got acquainted with the German anti-aircraft guns. I've laid on my belly on the aircraft and watch these things fire on the ground and then see them explode underneath it. You see, flash, 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 then all of a sudden you see, boom, boom, boom. We call them the little flowers that bloom in the sky. Black is so big, you can taxi on it. So I don't like that. It brings back a lot of memories and it's real. Then they'll go to the Louisiana Pavilion where visitors begin the journey through World War II in a train station where everybody went to war or came home in some train station in America and they'll actually enjoy a simulated ride. I think it's the best train museum I've ever been in. And they'll go to the Kushner Restoration Pavilion and they'll see PT-305. We're restoring a Higgins PT boat that was built here in New Orleans in 1943. One of the PT boats built by Andrew Jackson Higgins right here in New Orleans that served in combat in the Mediterranean during World War II. It's being restored. It's going to be put in the water next summer. It's about 80% finished. I just saw that big boat in there and my guys, it's fantastic what they've done to keep it authentic. Then the last place they will come to is the U.S. Freedom Pavilion, which tells the story of American technology and military power through the planes and the tanks and the weapons of the war. Well, the one way up top, Flying Fortress, the B-17s. As well as a Medal of Honor exhibits and additional oral history. So I crawled to the wall with all this machine gun fire going around on the sand around me, but they didn't hit me. Lunchtime will be a USO experience with our Victory Bells, so uh, that'll be fun too. A kiss is just a kiss, a sigh is just a sigh, ah, the fundamental things apply as time goes by. I'm a man!
course. Yeah. And when two lovers woo, they still say, I love you. Here's our dancing guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he did very good. The world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. He didn't get a kiss. I'm not going to wash my face. The goal of this museum is to tell the American experience in World War II. A good friend of mine, Harry, was a bombardier on the B-17 and uh, sitting next to your uncle. Yep. And he was shot down and was prisoner of war in Germany. The National World War II Museum prides itself on the oral history collection that we've acquired. They're not can plane after plane out of the sky. So I said, I get on a horn, I said to the girl, I said, Colonel, do you want to turn short? We got a long bomb run, we can turn short and that go right over that point. No, by gosh, we're going to stay on course, blah, blah, blah. With that, we're just about it to fillets. And then we get hit. It carries on the memories of what happened to us for our next generation to understand why it happened and hope it never happens again. It's what makes this museum special. It's a living trust, it's what it is. The Gary Sinise Foundation provided funds that allows us to hire another historian. And it's a race against time because the vast majority of these gentlemen and ladies are in their late 80s and early 90s, and some of them are even older than that. During World War II, there were three theaters. There was the uh, European Theater, the American Theater, and the Asiatic Pacific Theater. As you know, I was in all three, and that's hard to find nowadays. We have to get these stories before they're lost forever. I want them to feel proud of their story, proud of their history, proud of their service and have a confidence that we're going to educate younger generations about what they did. It's just fantastic. I can't imagine what they're going to do next. It's something you have to come every year to keep up with it. It's great, and it dwarfs anything I've ever seen. Unbelievable. This one I had a long time. It's hard to say what a highlight is when it's all great. Once in a lifetime. Well, for all of us. Oh, you got terrific people here. Thank you. Very good group of folks. God bless you, Joe. I thank you for everything. Thank you. It's hard to really express the depth of the thanks. I oh, guess that's what I'm trying to say. It means a lot. Come on, I'm going to start crying. None of us can ever take for granted what you did for all of us. You did what you had to do. You did what you knew was right. It was us or them, it was win or lose, it was freedom or tyranny. The choice was clear and obvious, and you did your job. God bless you, gentlemen, for what you did. We will never, ever take it for granted, and we'll do everything we can to make sure that others never take it for granted as well. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. More fun than a girl, aren't you? 